Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about variable speed pool pumps. What you see here is a Pentair Superflow VS variable speed pool pump. I installed this in uh, late 2016, early 2017. And variable speed pool pumps are becoming kind of the new norm. I think laws were passed recently in the last couple of years in the state of California that require newer retrofit uh, pool installations to have variable speed pumps for energy efficiency. So this is just one model. There's a lot of variable speed pumps out there. The Pentair Whisperflow VS is another one. I think Hayward and Jandy have their own, own models as well. But one of the things they don't really cover too well on the manual is setting the speed of the variable speed pump, right? So the whole idea is to save energy, but out of the box, these pumps program, come programmed, uh, not necessarily a very efficient schedule. And what do I mean by that? So you want to run this pump at a certain speed for a certain number of hours, such that you cycle the water in your pool once per day. So if you have a 10,000 gallon pool, which most pools are, you want to run 10,000 gallons through the pump and filter per day. Um, but how do you know how, what speed to set the pump up to do that? Um, it's, it's not really well covered in the manuals. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look at the performance, shut up bird. You're supposed to look at the performance curve for your pump and every pump has one. So you'll need to know what kind of pump you have. So this one, like I said, is a Pentair Superflow VS. I can go on Google and see a performance curve for this pump. Just do a Google search. And you'll see uh, a couple of charts that map the pump flow rate at a given speed at a given what they call total dynamic head. And what is that? Total dynamic head, is, at its simplest term, is just the resistance of, to flow of water through the pipes. And that's affected by the size of the filter that you have, the piping, the number of 90s, and so on. And that's not always easy to measure, right? So if your pool is being built and you have access to all the plumbing under the, under the, con under the pool deck, that might be easy to do. Or if you have an above ground pool with exposed plumbing, that's pretty easy to do. But like me, if your pool is already here, when you moved here, I don't have easy access to do that. And I think any measure of total dynamic head using the pipe length me method will be imperfect at best, but there's another way you can do it. So you can also measure total dynamic head by using a vacuum gauge on the suction side, that port is right here, and also a pressure gauge on the output side, which is right here, which should be very similar to the pressure gauge on your filter, um, especially if it's plumbed like this with a bunch of Ford long sweep 45s, and there's very little resistance to this type of piping right here. So I think we're gonna use that method, and that'll help us set our pump RPMs, and also how long we need to run it for at each RPMs to cycle the amount of water in my pool, which is 15,000 gallons a day. So let's get started. So for this job, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna be using the pressure gauge on the pump housing, which still works as long as yours does too. It should be good enough. But I'm gonna use this, this OTC vacuum and pressure gauge kit, which is designed for cars on to, to measure the vacuum on the suction side of the pump. This is OTC 5613. I'll see if I can find this. If it's still made, leave a link in the description for you guys. I'll show you what it comes with. Comes with a bunch of adapters over here. Comes with a, a gauge that reads up to uh, 30 inches of mercury in vacuum and up to 15 PSI pressure. Also comes with a length of hose and it looks like I just put a, uh, a quarter inch pipe thread adapter on here. So we're gonna unscrew that plug on the suction side of the pump and we're gonna screw this into there and then Screw our gauge, or not screw, we're gonna attach our gauge to this length of hose. And we're gonna measure the vacuum on the suction side. Now, once we do that, well, we're gonna do that at several different speeds so we can measure the total dynamic head. And then we can figure out what flow rate we need and for how long. First step is gonna to be to turn the pump off. Let's stop. And we're gonna unscrew this suction port right here. Now you could use just regular pressure gauges, but to make this work with pressure gauges, it's gonna be a bit more difficult because you're probably gonna have to dismount the pump just to be able to mount them. So I like this setup here because it's just a lot less work. I need to tighten this a little bit. So get that good and snug. Okay, I got everything hooked up and just turned the pump back on. There's the vacuum gauge right there. You can see it's still dancing around because uh, it's uh, got some air in the lines. 
But you can see it's probably going to settle somewhere between 10 and 15 inches of mercury. And it's going to be difficult for you guys to see both gauges at once, but I'm looking at the, the pressure gauge on the filter and it's reading 2 PSI. You want to make sure your filter is clean before you do all this, obviously. As proof, about 2 PSI. So now it's just going to be a simple matter of recording vacuum gauge readings down here and pressure gauge readings on the filter. Again, we really should put a pressure gauge down there on the pump itself, but we're making an assumption that the losses in this section of pipe right here that go from the pump to the filter are negligible. It's not perfect, but this is, you know, it's not the space shuttle, it's just the pool pump. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And when you look at the total dynamic head and uh, volumetric flow rates, the, those the performance charts, you'll see it's kind of difficult to pinpoint an exact total dynamic head anyway. So we're just gonna get approximate here. So again, like I said, next step is to, to record some data points on the vacuum gauge and the pressure gauge at different RPMs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and kind of write that down in Excel. Actually guys, I stand corrected, my apologies. So I moved the pressure slash vacuum gauge over to the pressure port and notice what the reading is. It's just below five PSI, so we call it about four PSI, but my filter only reads two. So either my gauge in the filter is bad or the friction in this section of pipe and I guess the elevation between the pump discharge and the filter is not negligible like I thought. So sorry about that. So I guess you need two of these gauges unless you would just want to swap it back and forth at different RPMs. So I got a second one of those pressure gauges from OTC just so I didn't have to move back and forth between the pressure and the, and the vacuum port of the pump, excuse me. And uh, as you can see, vacuum is kind of hovering, I don't know, between five and 10 PSI, or sorry, five or 10, um, inches of mercury, my, my apologies. And on the pressure side, we're bouncing back and forth, and we're probably averaging somewhere between two, around two and a half PSI. And this is at 2100 RPMs on the pump. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna record those measurements in an Excel spreadsheet that I've got going on the side. And I'm just gonna vary the pump RPMs and collect those measurements at various RPMs. And I'll show you guys the end result. I'm not gonna take every measurement in front of you. And this Excel spreadsheet that I'm working on will chart the pressure and vacuum and calculate total dynamic head for you. Again, I'll show you that in a few minutes, but let me just take these measurements first. I don't know if you guys noticed before how shaky those needles were, but there was a lot of air getting into the system. The air was getting in around those ports. So I took them back out and I put Teflon tape around the, the pipe threads and that has pretty much resolved the problem. And now notice how much, uh, how much steadier the needles are. They're not bouncing around all over the place. So let me uh, let my time wasted save you some time. Wrap the threads with Teflon tape. All right, I finished gathering all the data and you'll notice this Excel sheet has two tabs at the bottom. And don't worry too much about paying attention to the formulas and whatnot because I'll give you guys a link to this, this spreadsheet in my Google Drive. So you notice the two tabs. This one says without main drain. This one says with main drain. The only difference between these two is there's a blend valve on the suction side that blends the suction between the main drain and a pool vacuum. It's one of those uh, Pentair GW9500 pool vacuums. So on this tab right here, we're blending the main drain with the pool vacuum. With this tab here, we're just using the pool vacuum. So I would expect the flow to be your performance to be worse if we're just using the pool vacuum because there's more restriction to flowing because there's only one source and that pool vacuum uh, hose can be kind of restrictive. So anyway, without further ado, let's, let me walk you through one of these tabs. So let's look at the, uh, this one right here. So we measured the pressure and the vacuum at various RPMs, and those pieces of information, the pressure and the vacuum, can be used to calculate total dynamic head, okay? So that's done by this formula right here, which is pretty straightforward. Excel does all the heavy lifting here. So now what we do is we could take this total dynamic head figure coupled with the pump RPMs and we can look up what the flow rate is. And that's done using the pump's performance curve. So I mentioned earlier, this is, I have a Superflow VS performance um, a pool pump by Pentair. And this is the performance curve that Pentair publishes for this pump. So we see a curve here at 1400 RPMs, we see a curve here 
2200 RPMs and we see a curve here at 3000 RPMs. I'm kind of negating the, the quick clean just because um, I'll get into that later. So let's just look at these three data points or these three curves. So our pump RPMs at 1400 RPM, I'm sorry, our total dynamic hit at 1400 RPMs is 11 feet. So here's 10 feet. So we'll go like a little bit above that. So that comes out to, I estimated at 32 gallons a minute. And again, this is kind of subject to your interpretation. So 11 feet uh, comes down to about 32 or so. That's why you see 32 in this column, in this cell here. And if we look at 2200 RPMs, that gives us 26 feet of head. So that's like about maybe here. So I estimated that to be about 45 gallons a minute. Again, plus or minus a few. And then 3,000 RPMs, we've got 44 and a half feet ahead. So call that 45. So 3,000, 45, it gives us maybe 64 or so f gallons per minute. Yeah, so there we go. So I put in these, um, these little graphs here that kind of chart the total dynamic head with pump RPM and also the estimated flow as read from that chart with pump RPMs. Now you may want to be able to calculate the flow with some arbitrary RPM because they only give you three curve, four curves here, but I'm only looking at these three. You may want to be able to calculate the flow with some RPM that isn't these. And for that, I uh, set up a very simple regression model in Excel that charts using an exponential regression analysis, the pump RPMs with flow. And that comes out to, and this years will obviously be different, 17.415 times e to the 0 0.0004 times pump RPMs. So here, that like, kind of allows us to fill in the blanks. But again, it's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, I just whipped together uh, this last column right here that shows the number of hours of runtime you would need to run your pump at a given RPM, again, assuming this approximated flow, to achieve turning over the pool volume one time each day, All right? So I think I said my pool is about 15,000 gallons or so. So to turn over 15,000 gallons in one day at, right, well, to turn over 15,000 gallons at 1,400 RPMs or approximately 30 gallons a minute, it would take 8.2 hours. So if I wanted to, I could run my pump at 1,400 RPMs uh, for eight hours, and that, in theory, should cycle the pool volume once per day. Now, if we go over to the previous tab the, with the main drain open, notice that number because the flow is, the performance is better with the main drain open, there's less head, that number drops to 6.4 hours. So there's more to it than this though because these pool vacuums tend to not always work as well at lower speeds. Um, I find my pool vacuum actually works pretty well, um, you know, maybe around 2,000, 2,100, 2,200 RPMs. So if I wanted to use the pool vacuum because I'm, I could run the entire thing. I could run the pool pump for six hours at 2200 RPMs and I would get good pool cleaner performance and still turn my pool over once per day. So hopefully this guy, this gives you guys an idea of how you're supposed to set the speed or the, of the variable speed pool pump. Um, some of the more fancy ones let you dial in the flow rate. Um, I think, don't hold me to this, I think the the Pentair and Teleflow, and maybe one of the higher end Hayward pumps lets you do that, but mine doesn't. Mine just lets you dial in the speed. And this lets you figure out the flow or, or figure out the approximated flow and thus figure out how much how long you need to run your pull pump. Now mine has three speeds, so I could I could run mine, say, for, I don't know, like 2,600 RPM for five hours, and then I could run it for a couple hours at 1,400 RPM. So it really depends upon what your goals are and I guess how your pool cleaner if you have one, how that performs at various speeds at various flow rates. So again, hopefully this video helped you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like the video, please subscribe, stay safe, and thanks for watching everybody. Take care.